this is Santorini. And all of this, all of the bay here, it was a huge volcano that exploded in a massive, in a massive kind of eruption. And the kind of the centre of the island where it used to be has just completely disappeared. And there's just a little bit that's kind of volcanic. And there's also kind of like a, a town like um, a bit like Pompeii that is completely covered in dust. But there must have been like an initial eruption that scared the wits out of everybody. So everybody kind of ran away. And um, and so there are no dead people there. It's just like the entire the entire village is kind of like covered in ash, volcanic ash. It's absolutely beautiful. Stringer, in computer science. About 15 years ago, um, a researcher in uh, California at Xerox Palo Alto Research Center, he wrote a paper called Computer for the 21st Century, where he imagined what computing was going to be like um, in the new millennium. And the paper's filled with kind of visions of computers being everywhere, computers being on tabletops, computers being hanging on the wall, small computers that we carry around with us. It's full of kind of very futuristic style kind of things like um, a coffee pot that knows when you're getting up in the morning and kind of turns itself on. Um, various kind of lights that switch on when you walk into the room, a house that knows what you're doing, that kind of thing. And recently what I've been wondering about is why hasn't this happened? Why hasn't that kind of vision of uh, a future full of computers come into reality? So yeah, Alright. Yeah. Okay, one, two, yeah. three. So my name's Mark Stringer and I'm a researcher in computer science. So that's, that's it, yeah. Yeah. About 15 yeah, years ago, yeah. um, a researcher in California at yeah. Xerox Palo Alto Research Center wrote a paper called Computer for the 21st Century. And this paper was a vision of what computing is going to look like in the next millennium. And it's full of descriptions of really smart devices doing clever things, like a coffee pot that knew what time you were getting up in the morning, turned itself on, lights that switch themselves on when you walked into the room, various kinds of smart devices in your home that knew what you were doing. And they also imagine that computers would be everywhere, they'd be on every surface, there'd be displays all over your tabletop, there'd be displays all over the wall. And recently, that's 15 years since this article's been written, recently, what I've been thinking about is, why hasn't that kind of vision Come into being. Why haven't we got that kind of future where we see computers all around us? It really works. It doesn't really make sense. Instead of the computer in the background. Do it again. Yeah. I think you should shout. Shout. And then look over there now and again. Go on, last time. All right. To just be a little louder or really loud. She's just going to shout louder if I shout. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I think you should acknowledge that that's happening. <laughs> okay, so my name's Mark Stringer and I'm a researcher in computer science. Um, about 15 years ago, uh, a researcher in California, Xerox Palo Alto Research Center, he wrote a paper called A Computer for the 21st Century. And in that paper, he kind of he imagined what computing was going to be like in the next millennium. And he said that computers were going to become so uh, functional that they would be just absolutely everywhere. Every surface would be covered in computers. Everywhere you went, there would be computers. And he used the term ubiquitous, which is a kind of Latin term in kind of everyday, ordinary. Computers would just become an ordinary part of our everyday lives. And he had some examples of coffee pots that turn themselves on in the morning when uh, they knew that you were getting up, lights that switch themselves on and off, various kinds of things that reminded you of appointments, um, kind of figured out what you were doing and reminded you to take the trash out, those kinds of things. And what I've been thinking about recently is, why hasn't that kind of vision of the future come into being? Why don't we have the kind of computer um, intensive future that um, Wiser imagined? So Alright? Yeah. So what okay. So my name is Mark Stringer and I'm a researcher in computer science. About 15 years ago, a researcher in computer science in California, Xerox Palo Alto Research Center, he wrote a paper called A Computer for the 21st Century. And in this paper, he, designed, he described what he thought computing would look like in the new millennium. 
and it was really a vision of kind of computers absolutely everywhere, computers kind of helping us with every aspect of our daily lives. There would be displays absolutely everywhere, and there would be computers doing things like turning the coffee pot in the morning when they knew that we were getting up, turning all the lights on and off in the house as we walk around it, reminding us of appointments, doing all sorts of kind of helpful things in our lives. And one of the things I've been thinking about recently is exactly why that kind of vision of the future hasn't come into being. Naturally, we do have a lot of computers in our lives now, far more than we did when Wiser had his vision um, in 1991. But things aren't exactly like that, and I've been trying to figure out why. My name's Mark Stringer, and I'm a researcher in computer science. About 15 years ago, um, another researcher in computer science in California, Mark Weiser, who worked at the Xerox Palo Alto Research Laboratory, wrote a paper called The Computer for the 21st Century. And in this paper, he had a vision of what computing would be like in the next millennium. And he imagined that computers would be absolutely everywhere. He used this term ubiquitous, which is a Latin word meaning everyday, ordinary, everywhere. And he thought that there would be computers all over the walls, there would be computers all over our desks, there would be computers in our pockets, there would be computers in the environment, advising us um, on helpful things like kind of when we had appointments, knowing when we got up in the morning and turning on the coffee pot. They'd be um, turning on the lights as we moved around the house. And what I've become interested in recently is, why don't we have that kind of vision that Wiser imagined? Naturally, we do have more computers now than there were when Wiser wrote his paper in 1991. But we don't have exactly the, that kind of futuristic vision of computers absolutely everywhere doing smart things for us. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Because like, you know, when I go to the equipment now, right. like, 